Pleasures are just passing moments when measured by eternity and the things that you live for soon vanish like a vapor it'll all fade away Come a day when you'll need a Savior. Though many times you've turned Him away, you can't stray so far He won't hear you. Well, let me tell you what happened. To me, the first time I called him, he came with open arms. He welcomed me in, though many times I rejected his love. Never changed. He came Though many times I rejected His love never changed The first time I called Him He came Reach, 
Amen, 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 amen. amen. Thank for that uh, uh, song is always reminding us of our ministry, of our purpose, why we have our uh, broadcast this morning, and we're blessed to be to be here. And welcome po muli sa atin pong, prayer, uh, sa atin pong Workman's Treasure Study Series. Today ay Friday, and it's weekend po mga kapatid, and we're blessed na from Monday all the way Ngayon ay tinulungan tayo ng Panginoon, ginabayan tayo ng Panginoon. And um, purihin po ang Panginoon sa enablement and sa opportunity na binigay ng Panginoon sa atin. And even sa grace ng Panginoon na um, sufficient uh, para uh, gawin ang kanyang kalooban at uh, gawin ang gawain ng Panginoon ngayong umaga. And we're blessed also to, to have the brethren uh, with us right now dito po sa, sa Zoom at ganun din po sa ating Facebook Live and you know sa ating Workman's Treasure every Friday we are studying, talking about uh, studies on salvation. So and of course mga kapatid pwede po tayong pwede niyong uh, share nito or <clears throat> i-ano nyo sa inyong mga loved ones. This is for the purpose ng evangelistic sa mga Hindi pa nakakilala sa Panginoon. This is a godly edifying para sa mga uh, nag, uh, naligtas na sa mga anak ng Panginoon. Amen, amen. And it's a blessing to be here and we'll bless uh, sa salita ng Diyos na available sa atin ngayong sa ating panahon in the King James Bible, the perfect inspired word of God. And also uh, yung mga available truths na mga lessons na pwede natin mapagbulay-bulayan at mas lalo pa nating ma-appreciate ang Panginoon at ang ating natanggap natanggap natin na nanggaling sa Panginoon. And uh, good morning muli uh, sa atin po ang um, ngayon. And by the way, just give you a little announcement. Uh, magkaroon tayo ng break after this week, no? 
uh, after this uh, last day natin tapos next week uh, break na po natin kasi for a week at least dahil po mga kapatid we will have a trip going to ano going to um uh, tawag nito um sa Mindanao sa General Santos and uh, may God with ano um help us and uh, be with us and please pray for us also na gagamitin kami ng Panginoon sa trip po na yun and meron pong Bible conference po doon and um and ang alis po namin ay sa Monday na po so ang balik namin ay mga Friday uh, dito sa Luzon and uh, may God bless us doon sa time na yun na binagkalob ng Panginoon ang Bible conference doon ay 22, 23 and 24 yun po yung conference po doon sa Jensen And sana ito ay magiging victorious, maging fruitful po mga kapatid at may mga kapatiran tayo doon na ma-establish, matulungan natin sa kanilang faith. Amen, amen. And uh, praise God for that. And sa mga churches din na kanilang ini-invite. Okay, so purihin po ang Panginoon sa available time po natin ngayon. And let's greet dito po, of course, good morning sa ating host. Salamat po kay Brother Joma na available po sa atin at Good morning din sa kanyang family. Amen. Good morning din sa ngayong umaga. Um, nandun, may nakalagay dito, Adulam Kids. Uh, ito yung ginamit nila na account kanina. Sa ano po, doon sa... Uh, nandun ang, sila kasi ang parents nila. Nandun sa, nandun sa tabernacle dahil sa mga sa work po para sa camp meeting. And the men right now are very busy preparing. Uh, para po sa camp meeting na kailangan tapusin, please continue to pray for us also. Um, uh, kasi ilang araw na lang din po mga kapatid at magkakaroon po tayo ng uh, mag-start na po yung camp meeting. So we need to prepare a lot of things. Pray for us, the host, ang uh, people for his name, most especially ang aming pastor pag pray nyo. O yan, nandyan ang mga bata. Oh. Kita natin. So tumutulong sila, nagtatiles po sila po mga kapatid. So and and uh, praise God for that. And good morning din kasama din natin ang Power Family ngayong umaga. And praise the Lord. Hello, hello, hello sa inyo. Jan yung nasa Tabernacle. Amen, amen. And uh, praise God for that. At kasama din natin ang uh, by the way, good morning din kay Sister Evelyn, kay Sister Cherry Ruth at sa sa Power Family na nanood sa atin ngayon. And ganun din ang Miascos ang Miasco family, kasama din natin ang si Pastor Randy, si Sister Mercy. Nandito din sila sa Zoom. And praise God, good morning po sa inyo. And kay Juboy, kay Daida, kay, kay ano, Jaire, at kay Jokebed. Josebed. Josebed dapat ang read pala niyo. No? So good morning din sa Fabregas couple, si Brother Edmond, and kay Sister Mila. And ang Dimakulangan family din, good morning kay Brother Johnny. And uh, good morning po sa kay Sister Agnes. Amen. Good morning po sa inyo. Kasama din natin si Brother Limuel ngayon. Sabi niya nasa Indian Ocean siya. Update niya kaninang umaga. Nasa Indian Ocean po siya. No? So praise God. Si Mother Mary Astudillo. Kasama din po natin uh, this morning po mga kabatid. And praise God. Amen. Good morning Mother Mary. Nandyan po siya sa Fairview ngayon. Watching from Fairview. Okay, and also si kasama din natin ang Kamingawan family. Good morning din po sa inyo. Amen, amen. So malapit nang matapos yung sa Tabernacle. Oh, kitang-kita ko na. Praise God. Thank God sa mga faithful men ng ano po na naglilabor sa mga oras na ito, no? Amen, amen. And thank God sa mga measures nila. Amen. Si kasama din natin ang Sibilia family ngayong umaga. Good morning din sa inyo po. And ganun din si Brother Mark Tihada. Good morning at sa Tihada family kay Sister Sally. Magandang umaga po sa inyo. Amen. Brother Limuel, hello. Amen. Praise God for that. Okay. So dito tayo sa Facebook Live and let's greet our brethren uh, sa Facebook Live. Kasama natin Sister Christine. Maestro ngayong umaga. Blessed morning po muli. Evangelist Roji at sa lahat po. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Christine. Amen. And Sister Kath Paredes, good morning din. What a blessed day to study again the goodness of the Lord. And have a blessed day, brethren and evangelists. Preach on, sir, and to God be the glory. Brother Eliseo is with us also this morning. Sabi niya, amen. Bless, uh, 
Good morning po Evangelist Roger at sa lahat ng mga kapatid kay Cristo Preach the Word Evangelist and Glory to God. Amen kapatid. Amen. See you din sa camp meeting Brother Eliseo. Amen and your family. And also si Sister Leti Santiago join us this morning also watching also from Santiago City. And uh, sabi niya, blessed morning po. Good morning Sister Leti and good to have you with us ngayong umaga. Sister Jelly Del Rosario also. Sabi niya, have a blessed day. Everyone, it's a great privilege to hear again his two-edged sword preaching through online ministries. Amen, amen. And praise the Lord. Yeah. And thank God. And also si Sister Karen. Kasama din natin Sister Karen Son. Good morning. Watching from uh, Mexico, Pampanga. Amen. Sabi ni Sister Karen, a good and blessed morning po sa Roji and brethren. Good morning din kay Brother Uh, ano po, JM and kay ano po, uh, JL. Good morning din. Amen. And uh, of course, uh, mga loved ones din ni brother, ano po, uh, ni brother uh, John, ni brother, of course, Joma, uh, at ng mga lahat ng mga nakatag. Hello po sa inyo. Amen. Si Sister SJ Abul. Good morning. Watching from ano po yun, Panabu City. Amen. Good morning po sis. Good to have you with us this morning. And blessed Morning preachers, and God bless. Amen. Ganun din po sa inyo. And regards din kay Pastor Serafil. Amen. Morning din po sa church nila doon sa Grace Bible Church sa Panabo City. Sister Emmy Floor, kasama din natin ngayon Sister Emmy Floor. Watching from Manolo Forti. Sabi niya, blessed morning sa tanan. Watching and hearing once again the word of God. Glory to God. Good morning din kay Pastor Raul. Good morning Pastor and Sister Emmy. Si Brother Ivan also, kasama natin, Brother Ivan Nara. And sabi niya, good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Brother Ivan. And we're praying for your board exam. May God bless you and give you wisdom and, and knowledge and intelligence para sa pag-take. At ganun din kay Sister Irene na kasabay niyang mag-test po, mga kapatid. So, good morning. Who's about isa? Well, ano po, mga kapatid? I, uh, from Brother Limwell, sabi din niya, Uh, good morning again, Evangelist, and to all. Good morning po. Good morning sa lahat. And praise the Lord. Welcome po muli sa bawat isa. And we will ask our host now to play one song. Then after that, we'll go on ahead sa ating lesson po, mga kapatid. Okay? So, Mr. Host, please. <clears throat> Under grace, my guilt is gone. Lost the war, the record. 
But God in mercy had a plan His Son's own blood By sins erased My pardon now reads under is gone my chief accuser lost the war the record of my sins erased and it's very Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord sa umagang ito. And thank God for that song, Under Grace. We are under grace and we enjoy, uh, ano po mga kapatid, the exceeding, unlimited, infinite grace of God. Amen. In all things, sa ating Christian life. Amen. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer now. Then we will discuss uh, yung ating pong, uh, lesson ngayong umaga with regards sa uh, keeping work of God. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you sa inyo pong uh, kabutihan sa buhay namin. Salamat sa opportunity na binuksan niyo muli ang pagkakataon, Lord, ng door, opportunity na makapagpakinig kami ng inyong salita. Tulungan niyo kami, Lord, na magamit itong salita na ito na mag-grow kami, na, Lord, ma-appropriate namin sa aming buhay. And, Lord, na mas lalo pa namin ma-appreciate ang kadakilaan ng kaligtasan na ginawa niyo para sa aming kaluluwa. As we continue our lesson, sana ikaw po patuloy madakila at maluwalhati po sa aming buhay. We bless you now, Lord. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So good morning, brethren. Good morning po. Umuli. Good morning sa ngayon lang naka-attend, ay naka-punt, naka, I mean, nakahabol. And kay Brother Virgilio Gabriel, good morning. And uh, sa lahat po, mga kapatid. So okay, so pagpapatuloy po tayo, we are still, I don't know kung ilang weeks na tayo dito sa gracious work of God for men, pero we stop here dito po sa the keeping work of God. Okay, we deal this, discuss on this, the keeping work of God. And, and uh, ito pong keeping work of God is threefold po natin, three parts na diniscuss po natin. Yung una, with regards doon sa kung ano yung prinsipyo sa um, kaligtasan, Okay, ganun uh, sa sa kaligtasan, okay? Ganun din ang prinsipyo sa pag-iingat ng Panginoon para sa ating kaligtasan. So ano yung principle? It is by grace principle. Okay, it is by grace principle that is to say po mga kapatid, since it is by grace principle, so it is we are not kept saved by works, but it's still by grace. That it's the grace of God that keep us, that saved us, the same grace that Keep us also po mga kapatid. The second one is we studied on the principle doon po sa that grace okay, reaches eternity. That, that's why we have an eternal salvation, eternal keeping. Eh, kung ikaw ay ligtas, kung ikaw ay naligtas, at yung kaligtasan na yan ay it's not just good for a day or for years or for months and weeks or even not good only for a lifetime, but it is eternal. It is everlasting life. So that's that's the wonder of our salvation. That's why we can say always it's good to be saved. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bakit? Kasi po mga kapatid, I, ito ay once that you are saved, you are forever saved because of the terms na ginagamit ng Bible that we have everlasting life and we shall never perish. Okay? And the third principle which we discuss, ito po yun, bakit tayo napanatili? How will God keep us? Okay, ito yung keeping work of God, ito yung pag-iingat, ito yung promise niya na sa lahat ng mananampalataya, sa tapos at sapat ng ginawa ng kanyang anak, sa lahat na mag-trust doon po mga kapatid ay not only ma-save sila, but sila ay uh, ma-save forever. At isa pa doon po mga kapatid, and God has 
done everything in his power para ma mamintin at maingatan at ang ang isang ligtas ay manatiling ligtas at ito po ang kanyang the keeping work of God is seen in the manifold provisions and safeguards okay which he has made may meron siyang provisions and safeguard which he has made what for what purpose to secure our salvation okay to keep us saved and the blessedness is the good thing with our salvation it's not us who hold our salvation but it is god who holds our salvation so ano yung mga provisions and safeguards these are the safety nets uh, god has provided all areas any possible emergencies any possible threat na pwedeng mathwart ang kanyang plano or ang kanyang purpose in grace sa ating kaligtasan o pwedeng mahindered ang kanyang plano but God made a provision by His power, by His omniscience, by His almightiness. God made a provision. And these are some of the provisions and safeguards or safety nets that God has provided for us so that we can never lose our salvation. What are those? Number one, we talk about it is the power of God. So the power of God is directly engaged po mga kapatid in keeping our salvation and take note on that the almightiness of god the exceeding greatness of his power is directly involved and engaged in the keeping of the child of god saved please understand that mga kapatid the second one we discussed it is also the love of god this is the promise that the love of god will never ever let go it will never let go that's why it says there nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, whether be death, whether by life, whether by angels, whether principalities, nor things present, nor things to come. I know that there was a challenge this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distresses, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? The answer of the Bible is nay. Amen. In all these things, nay, there's none. But in all of those things, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us, po mga kapatid. Amen. So we discuss about that lengthily, po mga kapatid, that it is the love of God that saved. It's the same love that will hold you till the end, po mga kapatid. Amen. And will never let go. The next one is the substitutionary death of Christ that assure us also of that salvation, that that substitutionary death of Christ which was not just for for you when you were still a sinner, but even in that it will still take effect, po mga kapatid, that still take effect even if you are saved now, and ano po mga kapatid, that guarantees even our salvation. And the, the same thing of the resurrection of Christ. The moment we got saved, we are, we are also identified to the resurrection of Christ. God imparted His life to us. And the life that we have now is a resurrected life. And that life cannot die. You understand that? It cannot die. Because that's the life of God. Before we got saved, we are alienated from that life. But now we're saved. We have the life of God. And Christ now is our life. Amen. He is now our life. And that quality of that life is eternal. That is eternal. Amen. And we have that eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that's the kind of life and you cannot die. And that guarantees who can charge anything sa kanyang elect. Ano sabi doon po mga kapatid? In that, napakaganda, yung, napakaganda yung verse na yun. Tatlong bagay makikita natin. The substitutionary, the resurrection, and the present intercession and advocacy of Christ will be seen in that verse, Romans 8.34. It will be seen in that verse that assured that assured us. So we discussed that three things yesterday, uh, yung last week. And let's look at that. Romans chapter number 8 in verse number 34. Amen. Now, what I'm trying to say po mga kapatid, if you are not saved right now, there is certainty. There is assurance of salvation that once you will believe and trust Christ through the gospel, through what he did, Yung kanyang kamatayan, pagkalibing at pangatlong araw, pagkabuhay muli, yung kanyang dugo na idanak dun sa cross ng kalbaryo and lahat-lahat ng iyon ng kanyang ginawa ay ito ay sapat na para 
iligtas ang iyong kaluluwa at ikaw ay maging anak ng Diyos at magkaroon ng eternal life. Hello. Now, now once you do that, you believe on what he did, mga kapatid, instantaneously you'll be saved and you will you will have this much assurance. You will have this eternal security. So to say po mga kapatid. Amen. Now look at that. Ito po tatlo, ito po dito natin kinuha yung substitutionary death, yung resurrection and present uh, advocacy or intercession of Christ. Dito natin kinuha yung bakit secure na secure ang ating kaluluwa na once ikaw ay naligtas na there is now no more condemnation. Ano sabi ng Bible in verse 34? Who is he that condemned? So but kung atras ka ng kaunti, who will charge for God, uh, verse 33. Tignan nyo muna yung mga questions na yan. Sabi niyan, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? You want to charge in of something? The answer of God is this. It is God that justify it. Who? Who is? Who, the work of justification ay kanino? It is the work of God. It's not our work. That's why it's not by our works na tayo ay na-justify. But it is God that justify it. And the Bible says in Romans, I think, 4 verse number 5, Sabi doon, to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. Who is God? He is the justifier of the ungodly. Amen. Sabi ng Bible, his faith is counted for righteousness. So he is the justifier of the ungodly. He is the justifier of sinners. So he is he that condemn it. Kanina, I always see that just condemn it. Uh, uh, verse 34, who will lay in, uh, 33, who will lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Amen. It is God that justify it. Do you see that po mga kapatid? Ang Diyos ang nag-justify. Even if you look at Romans chapter number 3, verse number 26, sabi doon, to declare, I say at this time, and sabi niyo, sabi niya that, He might uh, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier. God is the justifier of him, of him that believeth in Jesus. Do you see that? I never seen anything that ano po mga kapatid na kailan man hindi hindi ang tao kaya ng justify ang kanyang sarili. It is God that justify it. Na intindihan po natin. Kung maintindihan lang natin yan po mga kapatid, and you will. Stop trusting yourself. You will stop working for your salvation. You will stop impressing God. You will stop trying to prove to God that you can save yourself. Amen. And you will start. You will come to the Justifier and trust Him and and trust what He has done for you because He's the Justifier. He's the Judge. Amen. He's the Justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. So how will God will justify you when you believe in Jesus po mga kapatid? Kaya ang sagot doon, balik tayo sa Romans chapter 8:33. Amen. Sabi niya, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Ku ibig sabihin, do not charge, do not charge the same. Amen. Charge God. Parang ganun ang statement nito. Charge God. Why? Because it is God that justify it. If you want to question somebody, do not question. Amen. The believer, but God, Amen. The one who saved, it is God that justify it. Now, who could say, Amen? Who could argue? Who could argue about that strong statement? It is God that justify it. Can you? Can the devil? Can the world? Can anybody in heaven or in earth or even in hell? Can anybody? Of course, the answer is none. Obviously, none. Amen. Can you? Could you ano po argue with God? Amen. It is God that justify it. That's just an assuring statement there. Now, how how come God could boldly assert such truth that siya ang nagjustify? Did God violated his his nature? Did God did God compromise at at one time so that he could do this to you and me which is unmerited, which is sin, sinful? How did God do that? Could he just forget who he is? Now the answer is verse thirty-four. The next verse is it says there, "Who is he that condemneth?" 
Amen. The, the second question is, who is he that condemned? You'd like to condemn the child of God? You'd like to condemn or judge the whom he saved? The Bible says, uh, it is Christ that died. Who can condemn to whom Christ have died? Amen. What else? So he was, he was trying to defend the child, the security of the child of God by, amen, by lovingly reminding po, mga kapatid, those who question his capacity, mga kapatid, by reminding them of that substitutionary death of Christ, that it is Christ that died. And yea, rather, not only that, and also, because nonsense kung siya ay namatay, hindi po, hindi po sapat po yun na siya lang ay namatay. He has to raise from the dead to secure that salvation, to secure that justification. We've been talking about justification, right? So justification is not just on the death, but it should be on the collective work of the of the work of the Son of God. It should be the death, the burial, and the resurrection. It should not be taken one piece at a time. It should be one whole package. It should be seen at one work. We call it the finished work of Christ. The finished work of Christ is not just when he died on the cross and say, it is finished. You have to put that in the right context. The right context of that is that he finished the law. He finished the requirement. But there's still, he has to be, to go to the heart of the earth. And he has to rise from the, from the dead, po mga kapatid. And then and then, he could, we could be secure of that justification. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Why it's so important to that? He can die if he did not rose from the dead. A dead savior is no savior at all. And you are still in your sin according to the word of God. If he is not arose from dead, so there is no real atoning power. There is no real justification power. There was no real ano po, redeeming power. Not until Jesus Christ have secured it by his resurrection. That's why he has to raise from the dead. Now look at our Romans chapter number 4. Romans chapter number 4. Po, mga kabadet, verse number 24. Look at verse 24. Then 25. It says there clearly, But for us also to whom it shall be imputed. Imputed what? The imputation of righteousness. That was the context. Now look at, If we believe on him, What? That raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. So kailan po ang, ay ang imputation of righteousness will happen when you believe that God raised him from the dead. Now, look at verse 25. This is a good point here. Now, two things. Who was delivered for our offenses? Amen. The deliverance of that offenses, Christ was delivered for our offenses. It was really for just for the sins, dealing with our sins. When he died on that cross of Calvary, when he was buried, that was one whole work that is part of dealing with our sin. That is Christ dealt with our sins. Now look at, and was raised again for what? For our justification. For our justification. So you could not just, because that not only not only it's a saving work, not only the resurrection is part of a salvific saving work, but justification is also an assuring work for the child of God. Because of the resurrection of Christ, God could now declare his righteousness to you and justify you. Because that is for the purpose of justification. And thank, thank the Lord for that, because of that. So you have to, you view that. Balik ka sa Romans 8.34. His, God's defense for those who question is the substitutionary and the resurrection of Christ. And not only that, how will God keep you saved? Romans 8.34. Kanina, balik tayo sa Romans 8.34. If you look at that, it's still in, in that verse where we use. In verse 34, Mr. Host, ano sabi dyan? Nasa 32 tayo. The Bible says in Romans 8.34, okay, and yan, nag, naghang ata yung ating 
Now, nandiyan na. Who is he that condemn it? What is the answer? It is the substitutionary death of Christ. Yea, rather, not only that, it is his resurrection, risen again, who is even at the right hand of God. Now, look at who also maketh intercession for us. And we see now the present intercession and advocacy of Christ. So you have there somebody at the right hand of the Father that keeps on pleading and interceding on your behalf. Isn't it wonderful? He's not just the Savior who died, but he's also the Savior who was up there in glory at the right hand of the Father. Amen. And making mention of you in his prayers, interceding. Amen. Uh, with God, with the Father, and he is Jesus Christ, the righteous. We talked about that last time. And that's one of the, this is the manifold provisions and the safeguards that the Lord has made to keep the believer safe. Now, let's go further on that. And let's now look at the, the side of the Holy Spirit. Look at the side of God, the power of God, the love of God. Ito the, the side of Christ, the ministry of Christ. Okay, dito po, the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ. Now, dito po yung advocacy of Christ and many more. Now, let's look at the side of the Holy Spirit. And we are blessed. Now, you see that the work of the Spirit is not also the convicting in the conviction part before we got saved. But including the work of the Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is part of that securing the believer of salvation. Securing the believer of that eternal ano po, safety. Amen. Uh, sa kanyang kaligtasan po mga kabatid. So, one of that work that we are going to discuss is the regenerating work of the Spirit. Anong kinalaman nito sa keeping? Anong kinalaman nito sa eternal security? And you will understand later on as we discuss. And let's look at that regenerating work of the Spirit. Po mga kapatid, as part of the safeguards, part of the safety nets and provisions that God has provided for the saved, for the child of God. Now, let's look at, marami tayong titignan po mamaya sa, as we go to the work of the Spirit. But let's look at the regenerating work of the Spirit first. Let's look at um, Titus chapter number 3. Let's look at there first that this is the work of the Holy Ghost. The regenerating work is the work of the Holy Ghost. Let's look at Titus chapter number 3 in verse number 5. We will look at the definition, the term of in it, dito po sa Bible, mamaya po mga kapatid, ano ang, word, ano ang word na regeneration. So the Bible says in verse 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done. So it is a clear qualification. Not by works which we have done. According to the Bible, but according to His mercy, He saved us. What was the process of that salvation? By the washing of regeneration. That's the word. The washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It is the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So regeneration and renewing. These are related term. Regeneration and renewing. And these are all the work of the Spirit. Okay? These are all the work of the Spirit. Now, to, to give you just an overview of this, how is this related? Later on, I'll explain in it by and by. How is this related to our eternal security? But let's know this word first. Now, regeneration in the is a Bible term. Let's nabasa natin kanina. Right there and there. Nabasa natin. Twice po itong ginamit sa Bible. One is in Matthew 19. And that is that's nothing to do with us. That is something to do with the nation of Israel in the future. It has nothing to do with ano po mga kapatid, with the body of Christ in this time and age but it has it, it will be in the future and that is for the national regeneration for the nation of Israel now ito ito ang pwedeng regeneration ta, sa atin itong Titus 3:5 this is the regeneration that is applicable to us the regeneration and the renewing of the spirit po mga kapatid now regeneration Clearly, it's a Bible term, twice na ginamit. And uh, this is a term, especially in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, 
for the believer, for the Christians, new or our second birth in Christ. This is our birth in Christ, or we call it the second birth. This is our new birth or our second birth in Christ. So by definition, itong regeneration po mga kapatid is the act of God. That's why it's the regeneration of the Spirit, specifically the Spirit of God. And by which the Spirit imparts God's divine life, God's life to man, to us. Oh, upon the single condition, and what is that condition? Upon faith. Amen. Upon believing in Jesus Christ as a sufficient and personal Savior. Okay, upon believing that finished work. Now, several words and phrases in the Bible expresses the concept of regeneration. As we look at later on, it expresses the concept. I'm just giving you the concept. It may not be used the word regeneration there, but at least it expresses the concept of regeneration. So we will look at these passages. Now, it shows how frequently ito mga verses na titingnan po natin that the doctrine of regeneration it can also be found in the Bible. And of course, very basic, I'm talking of it expresses the principle of regeneration. You know, in John chapter number 3, verse number 7, when the Bible says, ye must be born again, when Christ said, ye must be born again, and it was described there, it, is, it described there that this is not the birth of the flesh, but this is the birth of the spirit. When, when remember in the context when Nicodemus was asked in that verse, in, those, in the context of that verse, mga kapatid, anong sabi niya doon? How can a man be born? Can he enter into the sec into sec second time into his mother's womb and be born? Diba? You remember that argument? And of course, Jesus Christ explained further. Sige, let's look at that verse in verse number 4. Nung sinabi po niya po mga kapatid, look at, at last ka ng konti, verse number 4. Sabi niya, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in, into his mother's womb and be born? What was the answer of Christ? Verse number uh, 5. The answer of Christ is clear po. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. So you see, there are two kinds of birth, born of water and born of the Spirit. Ang born of water is obviously uh, pertaining to the birth, the physical birth. Kaya nga po, anong tawag po dun? Alam nyo po ba, pag nasa sinapupunan tayo, nasa tubig tayo, nasa loob tayo ng tubig. Jesus Christ is giving an analogy of the physical birth, amen, and showing a lesson of the spiritual birth. Kaya nga, anong tawag yung kung na nag-break nag na ba yung bag of water kasi nasa loob tayo ng water so pag mag-break na yun manganganak na ipapanganak na so that was uh, uh, ano po pointed out as the physical birth and of the spirit the other one is obviously water is physical spirit is of course is spiritual so that shows you two kinds of birth physical birth and the spiritual birth and he, if hindi niya magagawa yun he cannot enter into the kingdom of God now, verse number 6. Anong sabi sa verse number 6? Additional explanation ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Sabi niya, that, ito na yun. Ito yung commentary. Verse number 6 is commentary of born of water and of the Spirit. Ito yung sagot. Ito yung explanation. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. So, born of water is born of the flesh. Now, next. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So you show it shows you two kinds of birth, the physical birth and the spiritual birth. And what was the final admonition of Christ? Marvel not, I say unto thee. Verse 7, ye must be born again. So this is talking about a new birth. So mga kapatid, in a dispensational context, okay, please don't be shocked, okay? And But I'll give you in the dispensational context, this is not talking to the body of Christ. This is not talking to the saved person in our time and age in dispensational context. But by principle, by principle, 
this verses expresses okay regeneration then nothing this verses expresses regeneration by principle there is a new birth there is an impartation of a new life okay which we're going to look at later on so you see that so that is the expression of regeneration so in context nyan ito ay ma fulfill this would be the regeneration ng nation of israel as we go on po mga kabatid but anyway ephesians chapter number 2 verse number 5 ephesians 2 and in verse number 5 the bible says okay in ephesians 2 verse 5 malinaw ang the word ang ginamit doon ay let's let's look at muna sige let's look at muna sa verse number 1 para mas maganda ang ginamit is word na quicken or we are made alive and that is also the concept of regeneration verse 1 and you had he quickened. So the believer is being quickened. You had he quickened. Who were dead in trespasses and sin. That day we were dead. Now we are quickened. Now look at verse over 5. Equalify pa ng verse 5. The Bible says in verse 5, in that verse po mga kapatid, it says, even when we were dead in sins, look at, had quickened us together. We are quickened. So that is the quickening power. We are made alive. So that is also another principle or concept of regeneration. It refers that we have a new life. We are quickened. We are regenerated. We are imparted a new life. That's a concept again also of regeneration. Though the word regeneration is not there, but the principle of regeneration and the concept of regeneration is there the essence of regeneration is there po mga kapatid kita po natin let's look at colossians chapter number 2 in colossians chapter number 2 makikita mo din po mga kapatid ang word na yan we are raised okay we are quickened and the bible says in verse number ano po mga kapatid in verse number 12 look at verse number 12 the bible says buried with him in baptism wherein you also are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who had raised him from the dead. Now look at verse 13. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him. So that's the quickening power of God. So we were once dead and we are made alive. What is that? That is the concept of regeneration. Amen. And even 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 in verse number 17 that also speaks of new birth and new creation, and that bears also the concept of regeneration. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, which we are all familiar with that verse, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So that is also the concept and the principle of regeneration po mga kapatid. Amen. So clearly po mga kapatid, in those verses, except uh, we never mentioned, ganun din ang, ang, ang ano po, yung renewing. Ang pagagamit sa Titus 3.5 kanina, regeneration and renewing. So it has something to do with being renewed. So that is the, the, the verses po mga kapatid na makikita po natin doon po sa, doon po sa ating ano po mga kapatid, dito po sa ating... Uh, uh, term ng regeneration na pinag-usapan. Now, if you look at the morphology of the word regeneration, now, makikita po natin po mga kapatid, regeneration. So itong word po na ito, of course, if, if you break down how the words are compounded, there are so many words being compounded dito po mga kapatid. We have the affix, re, uh, the prefix, re, the affix, let's look at the affix, the prefix re and we have the we have also the uh, uh, suffix asian which is you know the word re means ag again okay and you have also asian which is the act of so it is clear if you break down this word what do you have either word generate or gene gene or ito yung pinaka basic gene so madami po for the generate or gene so 
If you look at that word, so makikita niyo po mga kapatid kung ano yung sense ng word. So pag may sinabi mong genes, that is the DNA. That means it is life. Right? Pag sinabi mong genes. Okay? Or that's where we get the, the origin of the word. Like the word Genesis. You see, the word ge Genesis, the book of Genesis, it means origin. It means beginning. Okay? Pag sinabi mong generate. So marami kang makikita, no? Generate. So genes, Genesis, generate. Ano ibig sabihin? To generate means to produce, to beget, or cause to. So you have there the genes, which is the basic life. Genesis, the origin or the beginning. Generate is to produce or to beget or to cause to. Or then, pwede mong gamitin din, eh, regenerate. Regenerate. Pag makikita mong to regenerate, it means to restore. It means to revive. It means to renew. And another familiar pa, ano pa, gene. Sa genes, genealogy. What do you have in a genealogy? Genealogy means a family line. It means the bloodline. So this word is so rich. But when you put them together, like another, ano pang ma-generate mo? Generation. Not only regenerate, but generation. Ano ang generation? That is the people of, of the same descendant. Or era. Do you see the word era? Amen. Or the same time. Something to do with that same time. So, with that po mga kapatid, marami kang makukuha po mga kapatid if you look at the morphology ng words po mga kapatid. So, with that then, re regeneration then, putting that in mind, could be put into in this wise. Amen. So, regeneration, having that said all of that regeneration means to be given or imparted life this is to be given or imparted life it is it is considered as a literal birth into god's family you are born really into god's family where the believer actually becomes the child of god and that's the sense. You are born. You are not just transferred from one family to another family. You are literally born into. Amen. And you become part of the genealogy of God. You are born into. You are called. That's why the believer is called as the child of God. Amen. In many areas. So word of God. We have now that birth and we become partaker of that divine nature. So what else? How could we express regeneration? It is also a literal rebirth of the Spirit or being born again by the Spirit and puts the believer into the family of God. You are a member of the family of God by birth. Or in other words, you are a member of the family of God by regeneration. So we have to honestly understand this because many Calvinists have define this ano po mga kapatid regeneration wrongly that's why we have to be correct on this po mga kapatid so in other words it is a changed nature you have a new nature now not you are not only made up by flesh and which ex we explained it this morning's a prayer breakfast you are no longer in the flesh when it comes to the nature but we are po mga kapatid after the spirit, born in the spirit. And that nature that we have is divine nature, which is created after God in through righteousness and holiness. Amen. With, that is the nature which is renewed in knowledge. Amen. So it is a changed nature. And the believer is given Christ's nature. And it is clearly in Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 24, and also in Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 2. Let's look at Ephesians 4, verse number 24. The Bible says, brethren, in that Ephesians 4, 24, this is the new nature. And ye put on the new man, that is our new man, 
which after God, after God is created in righteousness and through holiness. We have that which after God created in righteousness and through holiness. You get that, po mga kapatid. That is the that is the nature. It is created in righteousness and through holiness. Now look at Colossians 3:10. The Bible says in that Colossians 3:10 po mga kapatid na makikita po natin it says clearly in that verse Sabi ng Bible po mga kapatid dito in verse 10 Sabi na and have put on the new man which is what renewed in knowledge That is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him So this is now based on the nature of God this is not just imputed to you, but you are born into it. You are born into it. That's why we are born of God. We are born of the Spirit. That is the birth of the new man, that new nature that we have, the impartation of that new nature. That's why it could rightly called as regeneration. So, by the regenerating work of the Spirit then. Ano ngayon? The believer now is made a legitimate child of God. You are now literally amen, made the child of God. Legitimate child of God. Po mga kapatid. God being become your actual father. Amen. You, God, become your actual father, and the believer is now impelled by the Spirit of God to call God his Abba, Father. So, nagkaroon ka ng direct relationship, and you could call now God your Abba, Amen, Father. Call him Abba. And as a term of endearment, Calling the son, calling to his father, Abba, Father. Only the sons could have that. Now, being born of God, he has partaken of the divine nature. The believer has become partaker of that divine nature, and on the ground of that birth, on the ground of that birth, the believer now is an heir of God. And you become now a joint heir with Christ because of that ground, po mga kapatid. Amen. And praise God for that. Now, the application that I would like you to understand is this. Amen. The impartation of a nature, of this nature, this is an operation that is so deep that the nature that thus imparted is never at any time said to be removed for any cause or whatsoever reason. Because you are not just given, amen, a privilege, but you are born to it. You are born into it. You see? You are not just gifted of something, but you are born into it. This become now the natural right or privilege of being saved. It is imparted to you and there is no removal. There is no such thing, uh, such thing as change on these things. Ibig sabihin you, when you are born into it, that can never be taken from you. That is forever Ours and yours, po mga kapatid. Hindi po, you are not elected to be this. You are not just chosen to be this. But rather, you are born into it. This is the natural right ng isang mananampalataya, po mga kapatid. Nung siya'y nanampalataya, siya'y pinanganak sa pamilya ng Diyos. He's a legitimate child of God. And he is, God is his father now, po mga kapatid. And that is verified in the Word of God. Itong mga statements na ito po, mga kapatid. And ito po ang point. The vital fact of relationship through birth. Amen. Is never said to be disannulled. This birth cannot be disannulled. Because this is not just some kind of 
declaration. Are you listening? This is not just some kind of declaration. But as what I have told you many times, this, you are born into this. You're not just declared to be, but you are born into this. And again, this is the fulfillment po mga kapatid of the eternal purpose of God in grace. And this is where we lodge our unwavering confidence of who we are in God. Now, in analogy, in analogy sa physical birth, kasi ang physical birth ang ginamit na analogy. Gagamit din ako ng analogy sa physical birth. Amen. My sons, here, I have two sons, by the grace of God. They were not my children by declaration. They are ours. And having that right, not just given to them or by declaration, but they are born to it. They are born into it. Tama? Now, ito po ang point. When the time comes, when they will, they were me, either me or them, will deny. When it comes to child uh, sonship, and I'll, I'll tell them that, okay, I will disown you. You are no longer my children. Amen. Will that disannul the fact that they are not uh, that they are my children? Will that disannul that fact? Even if I even if the father will declare and say, "I disown you. You are not mine." Amen. Even if the father will declare, the father cannot change what happened. What actually happened that they are literally, amen, and really born into their family. They come out from the womb and by his genes and by his life is in the blood of his sons. Even if he declared by papers or legally, but that cannot change the fact that he, they are actually, amen, they are actually my children. They're actually my sons. And the DNA, the genes, could tell that. That they are not somebody's children. But they are mine. Amen. Right. Now, on the other hand, even if my children will disown me as their father, and say later on, and say later on, that, hello, and say later on that, say, pa, from, right, from this time onward, we will not know you as our father. We will consider you as a normal man. And we will declare from this time onward that we are no longer related. Now, the fact still remain. The fact will still remain true. No matter what they say, no matter of their declaration, what they say and what they declare that cannot disannul the fact that they are actually born into our family. They understand that close-mindedness. They cannot. And there's no courts and nobody in this world can change a fact that actually happened. Now, do you get what I'm pointing? Being a child of God is not you are transferred one, from one family to another family. We become child of God actually by a literal new birth. 
by a birth, literal spiritual birth. And we are literally born into the family of God. And that is to say, I have my father's name. I have my father's, which is God, my father's care, my father's nature, my father's gene. And that is an actual event that happened in the believer. I'm not transferred nor declared to be, but I am born into it the moment I trusted Christ. I believe on the gospel. We are literally born into it and we become part of it. You understand that? And that is now an inseparable, irrevocable relationship. No one could. There may be a change, maybe sa, let's go back to the human relationship. There may be some change, baka may misunderstanding yung father and children. They may lose the fellowship. They may lose that and many things po mga kapatid. But one thing they cannot lose and they cannot break, they cannot undo is that relationship that actually they're father and sons. Amen. And But dito sa atin, being the child of God, amen, the same equally true that nothing could change that fact that we are born into it. Amen. And we are forever the child of God. And nobody could undo that. Nobody could forfeit that. Nobody can declare that it actually happened. Could God disown you? No, he cannot deny his own. That's not the nature of God. You may deny God. Go ahead. Your denial of who God is cannot change that fact. Do you understand? You may not serve him. You may not know him. But if you actually being born by faith, if you are really born into that family, you cannot change that fact. That is binding. That truth is binding regardless on how you behave cannot change that you may deny him but the bible says but he cannot deny himself he cannot deny his own god will ever remain a faithful father there may be you may not want to fellowship with god but he will remain a faithful father and faithful to what he did for you and for me isn't it wonderful isn't it securing it is, isn't it? Ano po mga pwede, Assuring sa puso natin that I could say, I could say that I am saved forever because I am made the child of God. I am born into that family. I am regenerated to be part of that family. I have my father's nature. I have my father's name. That's why ang tawag sa atin, sons of God. That's why ang tawag sa atin, child of God. Amen. I have my father's name within me and nobody could revoke that. There is no power in heaven. There is no power on earth. There is no power in earth. There is no power in things present nor things to come could undo such marvelous relationship that God has engaged to his children. Nobody, mga kapatid. Amen. I'll say this even. So, not even God, not even God could undo such. Why? Why God can't do that? Because he is a faithful father and he is true to his word. What he has done in grace, he has done to you graciously, regardless of your response on how you received it. But he did it by grace, though we are undeserving. And that is who our God is. That's how he did it. What is that? It could provide a confidence in my heart. Amen. That no matter what, no matter what life may come, no matter where I wander, amen, no matter how far, 
but the fact will remain that I am a child of God. Now, question it. Should I abuse it? No. Why, not? Why should you? Why should you abuse it? What kind of mindset is that? So can I do what I want now and still be a child of God? What kind of mindset of that? And if you are still confused about that, listen to every morning's prayer breakfast and I discuss with that lengthily. Amen. I discuss with that lengthily for many, many weeks about that, about that kind of argument. You, you, if you, that is the kind of mind that you have, you have not truly attained the understanding of the blessedness of being the child of God. Amen. So you see, this is the provision of God. Para hindi ka na mahiwalay sa akin. Ito yung point. Bang! Ito yung safeguard niya. Para hindi ka na, para so that I will be forever engaged to you. But nobody could pluck you out in my hand. Anong gagawin ko? Anong gisigawa ng Panginoon? Amen. I will make you my child by birth. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Ito yung description, oh. look at, look at uh, John chapter number 1. Ito yung description of verse 13. Tingnan nyo, napakaganda. John 1.13, napakaganda po mga kabatid. Yung mga tinawag na sons of God, pero look at the description on how they are being made. Look at that. The Bible says, which, which were born not of blood. We are born not of blood. But look at, nor of the will of the flesh. It is not also kagustuhan ng flesh. But you are born of what? Nor of the will of man. That's ne- this is not also the initiative of man. But look at, but of God. Isn't it wonderful? You are born not of blood, nor of the will of man, nor of the will of the flesh, but of God. So who could now undo that. Do you see? Your regeneration or being born into the family of God is one also, not only as the result of faith, but it is also one of those assuring facts of the believer that could boost your confidence and you will not live in fear of losing your salvation, but could boost that confidence that God is forever engaged with whom he saved and to whom he called his child. That's why he said, I cannot leave you nor forsake you. And that's the faithful father that I have. You get that, brethren. The next thing that we are going to look at, not only the regenerating. So do you see the connection to the keeping of God? He keeps his own. He cannot deny his own. Please take note on that. Number, number, ano po mga kapatid, itong sunod. Not only the regenerating work of, ano po mga kapatid, the spirit. The next one is the indwelling of the spirit. Oh, amen. The indwelling of the spirit. Amen. The indwelling of the spirit. Ngayon, ano namang kinalaman itong indwelling of the Spirit, mga kapatid, sa eternal security? Now, one, one thing I'm showing you, mga kapatid, improving some eternal security, we are going to an unorthodox explanation. When I say unorthodox explanation, I, we, you have heard of many Bible studies about the eternal security, right? We have heard a lot of Bible studies about eternal security. At na, ang dami po mga kapatid na pag ma-Bible study tayo, ito yung bibigay natin ng verse, ito yung bibigay. Yun, ang, hindi, yun yung mga common things, mga kapatid, which we all know already. These are given uh, facts po mga kapatid. When I, the, in an orthodox way or in a way na kung saan hindi common, hindi po ano po mga kapatid, masyadong na pagbigyan ng pansin na pagtuunan ng pansin na ito din pala ay pwede kasi ang dami ang dami mo pwedeng gagamitin na na masabi mo na provision ng Panginoon and safeguard so pumili tayo ng isang area na kung saan po mga kapatid na seldomly and uh, seldomly explained po mga kapatid 
That's why we we have to take this like never thought that ito po mga kapatid could still be because we thought that it's just about salvation. Now that includes also the keeping po mga kapatid. Now this time, let's look at now another work of the Spirit is the indwelling Spirit. And you know po mga kapatid that ora mismo ng isang tao, ang isang believer na nampalataya sa tapos at sapat ng ginawa ni Kristo, ora mismo nanahan sa kanya ang banal na espiritu. Nung siya ay nagiging child of God, nung siya ay nagiging sons of God, anong ginawa ng Panginoon sa kanya para may magwi-witness para siya ay maging anak ng Diyos, na siya talaga ay anak ng Diyos. Anong ginawa ng Panginoon? Nagpadala siya ng banal na espiritu. Anong purpose ng banal na espiritu? That is to witness the childhood and the sonship of the believer. To testify the childhood, to guarantee the childhood, to witness the childhood and the sonship of the believer. Now, for example, let's look at po mga kapatid in Galatians chapter number 4. That's why my indwelling of the Spirit. And that is to attest na ikaw ay tunay na anak ng Diyos. So it is not your works that guarantees you that you are the child of God, but the Holy Spirit, the indwelling Spirit that guarantees you that you are forever the child of God. You are His. Amen. Now look at, anong sabi sa Galatians 4 and verse number 6? The Bible says in verse number 6 po mga kabatid, look at that part, because ye are sons. Now you see, kanina we talk about, amen, being the child of God. Now, we will be talking also of the indwelling of the Spirit because this is connected to the regeneration. To attest that, that there is regeneration, that you are the child of God, it is proven by the indwelling Spirit of God. God sent forth the Spirit of His Son. Look at And because ye are sons, now ikaw na enak ng Panginoon, God hath sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying what? Abba, Father. Do you see that po mga kapatid? Crying, Abba, Father. So, that's why you can call, you can cry now, Abba, Father, and it's the Holy Spirit ang nag-udyok sa atin, na nakirahan sa atin, that we are sons. We are anak ng Diyos. Now, look at, let's look at another passage. Romans chapter number 8. Let's start with verse number 14. In Romans chapter number 8, in verse number 14. Now, if you are listening right now and you are not even sure what I'm talking about, what I'm simply talking about is this. Okay? You need to be saved. Are you listening? You need to be saved. And you can be saved not by your works, but it's the work of God. And when you believe what Christ has done for you, what he has done on that cross of Calvary and that death, burial, and resurrection and that bloodshed of Christ, when that is sufficient. That was the provision of God for you. When you believe, when you trust that God said that he will all do these things to you and that you will be forever secure. And this is what we have been talking about. You are forever secure and you will become a child of God and God gave you a token and assurance and earnest okay a down payment or a proof or a guarantee that you are forever his and that is the holy spirit that is what we're talking about the holy spirit of god hindi po anybody could say that they are the child of god amen anybody could claim that they are but the real ano po mga kapatid proof In witness is this Holy Spirit. Now, let's say, let, uh, let's see Romans 8.14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. So you see, they are the sons of God. So you see the connection between the Spirit of God and the sonship? They understand the connection of that? Now, let's further on that. Verse 15, anong sabi? In verse 15, the Bible says in verse 15 in Romans 8, it says there in the next verse, Okay, so wala, wala pa, hindi pa gumalaw. So tayo na lang pumunta. Now, nandiyan na. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage. Nung ikaw ay naligtas, may natanggap ka. But what you receive is not the spirit of bondage. 
again to fear. Can you imagine po mga kapatid, tayo, bago ka naligtas, anong meron ka? The spirit of bondage and the spirit of fear. Bakit spirit of bondage? Tayo, bago ka naligtas, you are in under sin. You are in bondage of sin. You are the servant of sin. And sin is your master. And I also explain more of that po mga kapatid dito doon po sa prayer breakfast sa series natin sa Romans 6, Romans 7, Romans 8. So we dealt on that lengthily on that matter. So tayo, nangangamba tayo. We have fear of death. We have fear of this life. We have so many fear. We are in bondage. We are in prison of that fear. Because we have no assurance, we have no guarantee in this life na kung mamatay ka, ano mangyari sa'yo, saan ka pupunta, impyerno ba, sa langit, paano na to, paano na ganyan. So you do things per adventure na tanggapin ng Panginoon. But the truth of the matter is you are not confident. Walang assurance in the heart, walang confidence in the heart, walang boldness. But hindi mo alam po mga kapatid kung ano mangyayari sa'yo. So you live in that kind of spirit. Nung ikaw ay naligtas, hindi tayo nakatanggap ng spirit of bondage again to fear. But ang natanggap ng isang naligtas is we have received the spirit of adoption. It is the capitalist spirit of adoption. The spirit of God, that is the spirit of God. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And that's the reason po mga kapatid na Nag-assure sa'yo that you can call God anytime, Abba. You can call God anytime, anywhere. If you are the child of God, you can call on His name anywhere, amen, anytime you want, and God will hear you, and you have that confidence that you have the right to say that. You have that confidence that you have the right to say that. You know why? Because of the Holy Spirit of adoption that is living in you, that was given in you the moment you got saved. You'll not be ashamed. That's why ang pagkasabi po dito, he that believeth shall not be ashamed. Do you understand that shall not be ashamed? Ang other pagkagamit doon, he that believeth shall not be confounded. Ibig lang sabihin ito, kung ikaw ay believer, hindi ka lang na hindi na mahiya. Kasi may confidence ka na. But the sense also is this. Kung ikaw ay isang believer na, kung ikaw ay isang anak ng Diyos na, hindi ka mapahiya. Alam niyo yung mga tao, tao alam niyo sa Bible may nagsasabing, Lord, Lord! Lord, Lord! Sabi ng Panginoon, may tumatawag sa akin, Lord, Lord. But ang sabi ng Panginoon, I never know you. I never, can you imagine tumatawag ang mga tao, Lord, come into my heart and save my soul. Can you imagine what right do you have trying to call God your Lord, trying to call God your Father, which in the first place, you have no relationship yet. Because salvation should happen before relationship. How dare you calling God your father? How dare you calling God your Lord when first and foremost, you are not yet saved? Naintindihan ba natin ang premise ng sinner's prayer? How could a sinner do that? God cannot respond to such kind of ano po mga kabatid. Dahil that was not the way to respond to God's initiative of saving you. Before you can call Him your Father, you have to be related to Him. Para bang, kaya, kaya may nagsasabing Lord, Lord. Kaya nga sagot doon, I never know you. Ano sabi ng Panginoon doon sa kanyang ano po? Sabi niya, depart from me, ye curse from everlasting fire. Amen. I never know you. That's the point. But pero ikaw, kung ikaw ay believer na, whew, yun ang context ng Romans 10. Eh. Hindi ka ba mapahiya? Meron muna bago siya nag, nag-confess na si Kristo ay Lord. Anong meron sa kanya? Nag-believe muna siya sa kanyang heart that God raised him from the dead. 
bago siya makatawag na Lord. With the man, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Look at, look at, with the, with the heart, Romans 10.10. Yan, ikinakat kasi natin sa 10.13 palagi. Kinakat natin sa Romans 10.13 eh. Dumiretso kagat sa Romans 10.9. You, do you understand what's the right order of Romans 10.9? The right order, the proper order of Romans 10.9 is Romans 10.10. Kaya nang sabi doon, for with the heart, man believe it. Unto what? Righteousness. Pag once that will happen po mga kabatid, you believe in the heart, maimputan ka na ng righteousness, there and there, that is the soul salvation happen. And with the mouth confession, the next one, the next event, pwede ka nang mag-confess. Bakit? May righteousness na eh. Hindi ka naman pwedeng lalapit sa Panginoon na wala kang katwiran ng wala kang katwiran na katanggap-tanggap sa Kanya. I needed imputed righteousness before I come to God. And the only way to have an imputed righteousness is I have to believe. I have to believe. I have to trust so that I could have that righteousness. And when God will look at me calling His name, yes, there's that righteousness that I required. Remember, He is holy. He is just. He is righteous. And He required that. He demanded that po mga kapatid. And that's why when you call, seeing His seed in you or that righteousness in you, okay, you can go on ahead with the next thing that you'd like to do. You'd like to confess my name with the mouth confession. Ano bang iko confess? Anong iko confess ulit with the mouth confession? Anong iko confess? Verse nine. Balik kasi verse nine. Ano iko confess niya? Ko confess ba siya ng sins? Mag-confess ba siya ng kanyang faults? Mag-confess ba siya ng whatever need na meron siya? Anong i-confess niya? By the way, prayer and confession is not the same. Confession is admittance, pagtawag, pag-amin. Anong i-confess niya sa kanyang mouth? That Jesus is what? That the Lord, that Jesus is what? Lord. He will confess in his mouth The Lord Jesus. At saan siya maniniwala? Believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. So ano mangyari? So verse 10. So with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Then once na ma- maano po siya po mga kapatid, may righteousness na siya, pwede ni siyang tumawag na Lord. Pwede na niyang tumawag siyang Lord. Lord. Why? There is that righteousness. Now if you look at if you look at Romans 8 kanina mamaya oh, babalikan natin kaya siya hindi na siya mapahiya He can now call God Abba Father because of the spirit of adoption kasi child of God na siya Mamaya titingnan natin no So kaya nga ito yung mga repeat after me sinner's prayer salvation ay delikado to mga kapatid kung hindi mo maintindihan nang maigi at tapos doon ang pananampalataya mo, doon ang confidence mo, na save ka dahil nag-pray ka. Naku po, napakakawawa. You have not understood the significance of what Christ had done for you. And you need to relearn that. You need to hear the, the entire preaching of the gospel again para maintindihan mo yung object ng iyong faith. Hello? Kaya nga, anong sabi doon? Now, look at verse number 11. Look at verse number 11. Anong sabi sa verse 11? Ito yung karugtong. Oh. Ang magbasa ng 10.9 pero hindi pupuntahan sa 10.11. Anong sabi doon? For the scripture say it. Do you see this? Do you see that? Whosoever believe it on him should not, shall not be what? Be ashamed. Sino ang hindi lang mag-ashamed? Lahat ba? Sino lang? Yung mag-believe. That's why they can call. Why? Hindi ka mahiya at mapahiya. Why? Because you have now that relationship that God requires. You can now call Him Lord. You will not be ashamed to confess Him Lord po mga kapatid. Why? Because you are actually a believer. You are actually now the child of God. That's why you'll not be ashamed. And you'll not be confounded. 
Because God's ears will be upon you. Now, 10.13 is spliced. In verse 13, look up. Whosoever, paborito to, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved. O oh, si, ganun, kailangan mo ma... By the way, pag makakita ka ulit ng word na salvation, akala mo lahat sa kaluluwa eh. So by the way, I, I discuss a great deal of lesson, three and nine hours. Yung three Saturdays na kung saan nag, nag, kag, nagulantang ang mga, mga so-called Bible believers kuno. And I don't, I, I don't know kung nandyan pa ba yan sa Facebook or sa YouTube. Well, see, hanapin ko at i-download natin to ulit. And I've written an article also on this po mga kapatid. Amen. Now, look at. Is spliced mo eh. Bakit siya nakatawag? Ano yung itawag niya? Name. Paano mo matawag ang name of the Lord kung hindi kayo related? Remember, you can now call Abba Father because of the Holy Spirit that indwells in you. Bakit nandyan ang Holy Spirit? Dahil anak ka na ng Diyos. Ngayon, you are calling the name. Ang tanong, paano ka nakatawag sa name ng Panginoon? And how can He hear you kung hindi ka pa related sa Kanya? That's why ang explanation niyan Nasa verse 14. Don't stop there. That's why you need to go to verse 14. And in verse 14, it says there clearly, malinaw po ang binigay ng Panginoon. At sabi, Mr. Host, please, verse 14. It tells us there po, mga kapatid, how then? You see the impossibility? How? The how then is the impossibility. How then shall they call on Him? Papaano naman sila makatawag on Him, on Him, on the name of the Lord? How can they? How? 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 That's a question of impossibility. It can't be. How can then, how then can, shall they call on him? In whom they have not believed. You see, there's a prerogative. There is a requirement. Prerequisite. What is the prerequisite? You have to be first a believer. You have to be first a believer. How then? How, how then? Can you do verse 13? How can you do verse 13? How can you call upon the name of the Lord when when God was I don't know you. Baka baka ikaw yun sa mga ikaw yun isa sa mga tao na sasabihin, you call me Lord and Lord, Lord, Lord. But ang answer ng Panginoon sa iyo, depart from me, ye curse from everlasting life. I never know you. Sino ka? Bakit tawag mo ako? Anak ka ng jablo. We're not related. Right, you are your of your father, the devil. How can it be? I, you, how can I be your Lord when all you do in your life is you disobey and you disobey? All those who call me Lord are my child. They are believers. They are my own, and they have the Holy Spirit, so that they can call me Lord. I gave them the Holy Spirit, and for them to become a, to have the Holy Spirit, they have to believe on me. Amen. So that's the point. Kaya nga, kung balikan mo ang verse 14, kasi huwag mong isplice ba? Context, context. Verse 14. How shall they call? How can they call? If they have not believed. So believing comes before calling. So question, is that a sinner's call? Or a believer's call. It is, is it unbeliever's call or a believer's call? Sabi mo, oh, it's the unbeliever's call. That is again a direct, a direct violation of what is written. A direct rejection of what is written. Kung by the way, ito po, ah, ito. So I'm just being sarcastic. But I'm just trying to prove a point. But bear with my sarcasm. Bear with my sarcasm. I'll say this. Kung if you insist that you are saved by calling upon the name of the Lord. Okay? If you insist that you are saved by calling upon the name of the Lord. Tanong ko sa'yo is this. Anong tawag ko sa'yo? Caller? Caller? 
or believer? Come on. Amen. I'm not just I'm not just an, a sarcastic person. No, no, I'm not. I'm not used to that. But uh, that is just to prove a point. Anong tawag ko din sa'yo? Caller or believer? You need to deal with that. And then, how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So, how can you believe without hearing? So, you have to hear so that you can believe. Then you have to believe so that you can call. Ganun lang eh. And when you believe, something happened. And what is how You got saved. You become the child of God. You receive the Holy Spirit right then and then. Then you can do as a believer. Amen. Anything as a believer should do. And one of that is calling. And that calling is continuous. It's not just one time. Praying is continuous. It's not just one time. Amen. Then there must be a preacher. So that's the right order. Na gusto ko makita. So balik tayo sa Romans chapter 3 kanina. Ay Romans chapter 8. Yun na nagbibigay sa'yo ng confidence. He that believeth on me shall not be ashamed. They will not be confounded. Yun po ang point. Hindi sila mapahiya. Hindi sila mahiya at hindi din sila mapahiya. Yun ang point. That's why they can call with confidence. That is Romans chapter number 8, verse number 4, 15 kanina. That's why you can call God Abba Father. Bakit? Kasi sa Galatians chapter number 4, verse number 6 kanina, sino ang nag -udyok? Sige, balik tayo. Balik. I'll, let's be patient with this. Uh, let's be patient with this. I'll be patient with this. Let me deal with this again. Maybe you have forgotten. Let's look at Romans chapter uh, Galatians 4, verse number 6. Let me let me deal with this. Okay. Now, look at. Look at that. And because ye are sons. Dahil, yun ang context. Naging anak ka na ng Panginoon. Okay? God sent forth the spirit of his son into where? Into your heart. Kaya nga, the indwelling of the spirit into your heart. Now, anong ginagawa? Into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Now, ang question dito ay, sino yung umiiyak ng Abba, Father? In the context, sino ang umiyak na Abba Father sa Galatians chapter 4 verse 6? It is the Holy Spirit that it, of His Son that is in your heart. He is crying, Abba Father. Nakita niyo po, malinaw po ang Galatians 4 6. Siya yung, nag, siya yung umiiyak sa puso natin at nagbibigay ng impression that God is your father, God is your father, God is your father, call him Abba, call him Abba. That is the, the what he's doing in our heart. He's assuring us of the fatherhood of God. The Holy Spirit is testifying, it is crying, it is witnessing in your heart. Amen. That God is your Abba Father. God is our Abba Father. As a believer, as a son, God is your Abba Father. God is your Abba Father. That's what He's crying in your heart. Kita nyo po? Now, balik ka sa Romans 8 verse number 15. Nung ikaw din ay nasave, nung ikaw din ay nasave, ito ang natanggap mo. Natanggap mo ang spirit of adoption. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Explain that late uh, kanina. But, look at, but we have received the spirit of adoption. What is the spirit of adoption? Capital S. That is the Holy Spirit. This is actually a cross-reference to Galatians 4. This is the Holy Spirit. You have received the spirit of adoption. Now, look at the next part. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, again, what do you observe in this verse? Who was crying, Abba, Father, in this verse? Is we. It is the believer. Nagita nyo po, it is the believer that is crying, Abba, Father. In Galatians 4, who was crying, Abba, Father, in your heart? 
It was the Holy Spirit. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, who is crying Abba, Father? It is the believer that is now crying Abba, Father. So what do you have that in mind? What do you have in mind? So yung Holy Spirit, ang umiiyak sa puso mo ng crying Abba, Father, ay siyang nag-udyok sa'yo na mag-cry out in an audible voice sa yung mouth, crying Abba, Father. Siya yung nag-udyok, siya yung nag-prompt, siya yung nagturo sa'yo to call God your Father, your Abba. That is a special term for, uh, for being a father, for the fatherhood of God. So siya yung nag prompt sa isang believer, kaya ka makatawag ng Abba Father dahil merong kang witness sa iyong puso, dahil sa spirit of adoption na nagpapatunay, dahil sa kanya na ikaw na ngayon ay anak ng Diyos at tawagin mo siya na Abba Father. That's why we can now call Lord, Lord, Father, Father. And we can be assured of that and will not be ashamed and we will not be confounded. You know why? Because of the reality of our relationship now. Because of that regeneration. Because we are now saved. We are now the child of God. And how do I know that? It is the same spirit that indwells in you, not only taught you to cry, Abba Father, to call God your Father, but also He is the one who testify and witness that you have the right and the access and the privilege to do that because you are his child. Look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. Whoo! Napakaganda. And the Bible says, the spirit itself, that same spirit of adoption that is in your heart, the spirit itself bear it witness with our spirit. That we are what? That we are the children of what? Of God. Kaya pala, may confidence ka, may boldness ka, may access ka because of that indwelling spirit sa atin. At yan ay nagpapatunay na ikaw ay anak ng Diyos. Romans 8. Romans 8, so that witness of the Spirit is more assuring than the witness of men. Ito, that's why we put it here, the indwelling of the Spirit. The witness of the Spirit is more assuring than any witness. This is the witness of the Spirit. God is looking and hearing the witness of the Spirit that you are God's child. And anytime, the first qualification when you call on God, God will look at you through the witness of the Holy Spirit, if you are His child po, mga kapatid. Now, look at Romans 8. Look at verse 9. I'd like you to look at, atras ka ng konti sa verse 9. Para hindi tayo maligaw. Look at verse 9. Amen. Anong sabi dyan? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. You see that? You are now in the Spirit. Now, look at, how do I know that I am in the Spirit? If so be, if so, parang ganun, kumbaga ang expression na, if so, if so be, or since, that the Spirit of God dwell in you. So the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, ito po masaklap. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is what? He is none of his. If wala kang Spirit of God, kahit sabihin mo pa, ako ay saved! Ako ay 100% sure na saved! Wala ang duda! Pwede kang magiging, you can be as confident as you can be. Pero meron ka bang witness? Apart from yourself. Sa iyong confidence. Na ikaw talaga ay anak ng Diyos. Really? Because pwede kang 100% confidence na na ligtas ka or tama, confident na tama yung pinaniwalaan. At the same time po, mga kapatid, mali. At hindi ka, you can be as lost as you can be. Because your confidence in a wrong place would not help you save, get you saved. 
Why? It's the witness of the Holy Spirit na ikaw ay anak ng Diyos. Kahit confident, confident, pero wrong object of faith pala. Kahit confident ka, oh, ba, alam kong sinner's prayer ang kaligtasan ko. Basta alam kong I am saved. Basta alam kong I am saved. Kasi ganito eh. Confident ako eh. Wala akong duday kahit anong gagawin ko. Again, that will not save you because it should start with salvation. Tunay ka bang naligtas? At paano mo nasabing save ka? Anong object ng iyong faith? Saan mo nilagak ang iyong confidence? Is it on what you did or what he did? So the Holy Spirit will testify of that sonship po mga kapatid. So that's why we are confident na tayo anak ng Diyos. Now, another thing na gusto ko makita po natin po mga kapatid. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3. First Corinthians 12, verse number 3. Wow, ang bilis ng oras. Okay? Verse 3. Look at. Please maintindihan nyo kasi sabi ng Paul, Wherefore, I give you to understand. This is meant for you to understand. Look at, ha? Huh? That no man, so no means no, okay? No means no. And don't miss this because he wants you to understand. That no man... Speaking by the Spirit of God, speaking sa pamamagitan ng Espiritu ng Diyos, call it Jesus accursed. You will not call Jesus accursed if you have the Spirit of God. Kailanman, hindi mo siya i-accursed if you have the Spirit of God. But you will call Him what? You will call Him Lord if you have the Spirit of God. Anong sabi sa Bible? And that no man, no man, no man means no man, can say, makasabi, that Jesus is the Lord. Do you see that? No man can say that He is the Lord. Remember, ano sa Romans chapter number ano? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Anong Romans 10.9? If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus. Anong sabi ng Bible? No man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but who? But by the Holy Ghost. So, ano, ano ang point? Kaya ka makatawag na si Kristo ay Lord. It's because you have now the indwelling spirit. Amen. You have now the indwelling spirit. At siya yung nagturo sa'yo na tawagin si Kristo na Abba Father or Lord. Kung wala kang Holy Spirit, Spirit. You can you can ano, call him Lord, Balaka. But you are not related with God. You are not, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't have the token of sonship, the guarantee of sonship. So anong gagawin pa yun I never know you. Now, so that is very important. The prerequisite, amen, to calling upon the name of the Lord is you have to be saved. You have to have the Spirit of God. And to have the Spirit of God, you have to be saved. So ang challenge ngayon, paano natanggap natin ang banal na espiritu? Paano natin natanggap ng banal na espiritu? Kasi para makatawag ka sa Diyos na ikaw ay, ay siya ay father mo or lord mo, ay dapat meron kang banal na espiritu. Na ang tanong, paano mo matanggap ang banal na espiritu? Is it by saying, come Holy Spirit, I need you? Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. No, it's not. And you know that. Now, let's go straight directly to the Bible. Galatians 3, 2. Galatians 3, verse number 2. Paano matanggap ang banal na Espiritu? Galatians 3, 2. Ano sabi doon? This only would I learn of you. Paul was asking to them, Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law? Or by hearing of what? Hearing of faith. So paano natanggap ang banal na Espiritu? By hearing of faith. Hearing of faith. Oh, bakit hearing of faith? Sadyang nanampalataya ka, hindi mo siya tinanggap at pinapapasok sa puso. Nung ikaw ay nanampalataya sa isip sa puso na sapat na yung ginawa ni Kristo, ano meron? Pumasok ang banal na Espiritu. Bakit? Anak ka na niya eh. Naligtas ka na eh. Pumasok ang banal na Espiritu. You see that? Po mga kapatid, by hearing of faith. Now let's look at, for instance, 
Acts chapter number 10, let's look at for instance, there was a preaching ni, ni Peter. This is one instance po mga kabatid dito sa book of Acts kung paano pa natanggap ng isang Gentile ang Holy Spirit. Look at verse 43. Look at verse 43. This was the invitation ni Peter sa isang Gentile doon sa kanya si Cornelius, doon sa kanyang ano po mga kapatid na pinangaralan. Anong sabi doon? To him, this, is, is, this was his preaching, to, get, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, okay, whosoever believeth in him, look at the invitation, whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. Anong, anong, anong sinabi lang niya? Whosoever believeth. So sino yung mananampalataya kay Kristo shall receive remission of sins. Now look at verse 44. Ito yung actual event. Ito yung actual event. Now, verse number 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. Meron ba dong repeat after me? Para bago sabi mo, pumasok ka sa aking puso at iligtas mo ang aking kaluluwa. Meron bang ganon? Or while they are hearing the word, while they are hearing the word, while they are hearing the truth of the preaching, ano nangyari? The Holy Ghost fell on them. The Holy Ghost indwell on them. Right then and then. Nakita nyo po? Kasi the Holy Ghost will, ano po mga kabatid, it will indwell. Pag sila po ay nanampalataya. Yun yung requirement eh. Amen. Ano, anong sabi po mga kabatid? Look at, uh, look at Romans chapter, ano po, ay Acts chapter 10 pa rin po mga kabatid. Or Acts 15. I'm sorry, Acts 15. Tingnan nyo. Sa Acts 15, may sinabi po ang Panginoon sa kanila doon. Look at dito, verse number 7. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 7 ha. Acts 15 verse 7. May ikukuha ka lang, i-illustrate ko lang, ginagamit ko lang itong mga verse na ito to, to prove a point na ito sa ganitong pamamaraan, pumapasok ang Holy Ghost. Hindi sa pamamaraan ng repeat after me or whatever. They need to hear the preaching. Amen. They have to believe then the Holy Ghost will give I will be given to them. Look at verse 7. When there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made a choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel. Sino yung Gentile na yon? Sino yon? Si Cornelio sa Acts 10. Yun yung binasa natin. And they heard the word of the gospel and what? And believed. So they heard, then they believed. Yun yung... Yun yung Nung napakinggan ng gospel, ang response ay believing. Now look at what happened. In verse 8, And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, look at, giving them the Holy Ghost. Giving them that Holy Ghost. When they heard the gospel, they believed in God gave them the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then saka pa sila nakatawag. Sa Panginoon. Kasi may Holy Ghost na sila. Now look at another instance. Look at Acts 19. Acts 19, brethren. Look at this part over here. At anong sabi ng Bible? May nakausap si Paul ng mga disciples ni Apollos. Pero may tanong si Paul. Ano ang tanong ni Paul? Verse 2. Look at verse 2. Acts 19, verse number 2. And the Bible says, He said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Have ye received the Holy Ghost since when? Since ye believed? So yun po eh. Yun po ang point eh. Ang requirement, prerequisite na magkaroon ka ng Holy Ghost is first you have to be a believer. At ang prerequisite para makatawag ka sa Panginoon, you have to have the Holy Spirit. And the prerequisite to have the Holy Spirit, you have to be a believer. You have to believe by faith. Amen. Salvation. Kaya yun yung order na makikita po natin po mga kapatid. Now look at John chapter number 7. Ito yung sinabi ng Panginoon sa kanila with regards to the prophecy ng Holy Spirit po mga kapatid. And look at verse number ano po. Look at verse number 38. Look at verse 38. Basahin ko. Roma ay John na ay 7:38. He that believeth on me, 
as the scripture, sabi dito, had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Sino to? Sino tong tinutukoy ng Panginoon? Verse 39. But this take he, look at the parenthesis, kasi this is an advanced revelation in the viewpoint ng writer, but spake this but this spake he of that of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive so you see that he spake of the spirit that they that uh, which they that believe on him should receive paano nila matanggap ang holy spirit when they believe for the holy ghost was not yet given because that jesus was not yet glorified So, mga kapatid, ano pa bang, pa bang requirement natin? At ang Holy Spirit requirement para matawag mo si Jesus Christ na Lord. Para matawag mo ang Panginoon na Abba Father, you need to have the Holy Spirit. But to have the Holy Spirit, you need to be saved by faith. So, what is that in, in that order? That's very important. Ang indwelling ng Holy Spirit. And sana nakuha po natin, naintindihan natin. It cannot be that sinner's prayer. It cannot be. It must be faith. Then you can have the Holy Spirit because that will attest that you are the child of God. And when you are now the child of God, you can now call Him your Father. And you can now call Him Lord. So that indwelling of the Spirit is very strong. That is a very assuring fact. Fact that nangyari sa iyo at sa akin na sumampalataya kay Kristo. Na may witness ka na na ikaw ay anak ng Diyos. May witness ka na that you are His. Amen. So every Christian, every believer is indwelt with the Holy Ghost at that point of salvation And so that po mga kapatid, the glory of Christ can be a reality within our lives. Amen. We can have that mga kapatid. It could be a reality sa ating buhay po mga kapatid. And our bodies, that's why our bodies will be, uh, becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, that our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 6, ganun din po mga kapatid. It's just like the tabernacle and or the Old Testament temple na nandun yung glory ng Panginoon resided. At ang ating katawan na ngayon is nagiging templo ng Holy Spirit. This means that the glory of God is inside us and can be manifested, amen, in blessing as we are controlled in the Holy Spirit. That's why we are told by an action that know ye not that Ye are the temple of God in 1 Corinthians 3.16 and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Amen. The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So the believer received the Spirit of God through the hearing of faith. Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And while you are listening and when you believe the Word of God, He will send to you the Holy Ghost. And the believer did not invite the Holy Ghost to dwell in him. But rather upon believing the gospel in Ephesians 1.13, in whom you trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed and you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Yung indwelling ng Holy Spirit, it is not Only, po mga kapatid, it is not only a testimony and a guarantee of sonship, but the indwelling of the Spirit will also serve as a seal of our sonship. The seal of being a believer. The, the seal that we are His. I remember that, ano po mga kapatid, that seal. Sabi nun, sabi, I think that is in 2 Timothy 2.19. Sabi nun, nevertheless, the foundation of God stand it sure. I could not memorize that very well. Please help us, Mr. Holmes. Pero pag sabi na stand it sure, sabi na, um, for he knoweth him that are his. Uh, and sabi na, having this seal, 2 Timothy 2.19, having this seal. Ano yung seal na nandun sa atin? The Lord knoweth. 
Tama ba? The Lord knoweth them that are His. So yun yung seal. Ano? Alam na. I like this. Example, ito yung seal. Circle. Napakaganda. Kung sino man may mga printer dyan, no? sino may sino man nagpiprint ng church, ay, ng, ng, ng church, ng, 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 ng t-shirts or gamit, itong gusto kong ma- sana design. Kung baga, may logo. Ito yung logo. Ito yung circle. Sulatan mo ito ng, ito yung seal. The, okay, or dito po, the Lord knoweth them that are His. Woo! Or i- ipali- ikot mo yung ganyan po mga kapatid. That's having this seal. Sabi nun, having this seal. Kama, ano yung seal na yon? The Lord knoweth them that are His. Isn't it wonderful? Brother Bandam, if you are listening, pwede ka bang gumawa ng t-shirt na ganyan? At bibili ako. At bibili yung iilang nasa workman's treasure na nag-attend. Or sino yung nagpiprint dyan? Brother Beans! Brother Beans ay nagnegosyo-negosyo. Kaya lang, hindi na umaten sa workman's treasure. Eh. Paabot nyo kay Brother Beans. Ha? Sana nag-grow pa siya at natututo pa siya. Amen. Now, <laughs> balik tayo doon sa ano po. The Lord knoweth them that are His. Po mga kapatid. Amen. Can you imagine that po mga kapatid? Intindihan niyo po 'yon? Bakit? Sino yung nag sino yung seal natin? Ang Holy Spirit. At once na nando ng Holy Spirit sa iyo, ah, you are mine. Ganun na ang palatandaan. You're mine. You see that, mga kapatid? That he is also upon believing, he indwelt in you at the same time he become that seal that you are his. Po mga kapatid. Amen. You are his. Oh, so may nagsasabi na, bili din daw siya sa camp meeting. Oh, yun ha. Bumunta pa naman yung lahat sa camp meeting. Oh, mayroon na kayong pagkakitaan. So, dapat mayroon, mayroong ano, mayroong anong tawag nito, a commission din ako. Ah, joke lang. So, I forget that. <laughs> Amen. So, he is instantaneously saved. Pag na-dwell, indwell ka ng spirit and you become a child of God. And simultaneously also, He received the Spirit of God into his heart. Natanggap mo yung Holy Spirit and gave him the Spirit of his Son into his heart. Ano yun? Anong purpose nun? As an earnest. Look at Ephesians 1.14. Ano yung indwelling of the Spirit? Earnest. Look at Ephesians 1.14. Tingnan natin. So, hindi lang siya seal. Yung indwelling serve also as an earnest. Do you know, do you understand what an earnest is? That earnest is a down payment. That is a token, a guarantee, a guarantee na ikaw ay anak ng Diyos. Ikaw ay, no, wala na. That, that foundation of God stand it sure. That's why it is, mga kapatid, it is uh, uh, assuring, it is keeping you. Po, mga kapatid, it stand it sure. It is an earnest. Look at, ang context nito, Ephesians 1.13. Sige, balik ka. Ephesians 1.13. Para hindi tayo maligaw. Amen. Sabi dito, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, then ye were sealed. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Capital S. Now look at the next one. Hindi lang siya spirit of promise, spirit of adoption, but look at verse 14. The next verse. Anong sabi po mga kabadid? Hindi pa, naghang ulit. Yun, which is the earnest? Which is the earnest of our what? Of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. You know what is the earnest? That's the guarantee. Yun po yung token, down payment. That a token, an assurance na ikaw ay sa Diyos na ikaw ay sa Diyos po, mga kapatid. So, isn't it wonderful na meron tayong indwelling of the Spirit po, mga kapatid, na nanahan sa atin at ito ay mag-serve na, na earnest? Look at look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 pala. 2 Corinthians 1. And I think that's in verse 21. Verse 21. Look at Romans chapter. Uh, if 2 Corinthians 1.21, tingnan nyo po. 
I think that's in 121. Yeah, tama po, tama po. Verse number, Now He which established us with you in Christ hath anointed us is God. Now look at the next verse. Verse 22. Anong sabi sa verse 22? The Bible says, Who hath also sealed us, nung sinil ka, not only that, and hath given the earnest of the Spirit, where? In your heart. The Spirit as an earnest. That's a token, that's a guarantee of our sonship, of our guaranteed forever. The Lord knoweth them that are His. You are His. It is an earnest. Look at 2 Corinthians 5. Look at the chapter 5 in that same ano po mga kabatid. Look at verse number 5. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 5. The Bible says, Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who hath also given us the earnest what? Earnest what? Earnest of the Spirit. Isn't it wonderful na meron tayong earnest of the Spirit in our heart? Now look at Romans chapter 5. Nung ikaw ay nasave, verse 5, Romans 5, verse 5. Nung ikaw ay nasave, nabigyan ka din ng Holy Spirit. Ano sabi dito? And hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Look at, which is given to whom? Unto us. So what? What for? This is really verified in the Word of God that we we have the Holy Spirit, and it is always the ministry of the Holy Spirit, also, Amen, to assure you that you are the child of God, you are His, and He is also the seal at the same time the guarantee. That's why we needed that. And is there any assuring thought than that that having the indwelling of the Spirit, po mga kapatid? And even what Christ said, sabi niya in John 14, verse number 16. And sabi niya, I will pray the Father that He shall give you another comforter that ye may abide, that He may abide with you, look at, forever. Yes, you may quench the Holy Spirit. Yes, you may grieve the Holy Spirit. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. You can quench the Holy Spirit. That is the truth in our Christian life because not all the time we are right with God. But the good thing is you may grieve Him, you may quench Him, you may resist Him, you may vex Him. You can do whatever you want with the Holy Spirit. But one thing is sure, He cannot leave you. He cannot abandon you. Thank God, amen, I am kept because the Holy Spirit will abide with me forever. And I'll stop there. And we're blessed po mga kapatid. To, to know the assurances, the sweet assurances as the ministry of the Holy Spirit in regeneration and also in indwelling. Sa pag-resume ng ating ano po mga kapatid, sa pag-resume ng ating, ating, mga, ating gawain, marami pa tayong pag-usapan with regards to the work of the Holy Spirit. But I hope po mga kapatid, it, you appreciate kung anong nagawa ng Panginoon sa atin. At the same time, this is an invitation sa mga hindi pa nakatiyak sa kanilang kaligtasan po mga kapatid na masave po sana kayo at ang kaligtasan na ngayon ay wala ka nang gagawin dahil tinapos na lahat ni Kristo mananampalataya ka na lang ito ay tapos na sapat na para sa ikaliligtas ng kaliluwa at ang object ng iyong pananampalataya ang iyong tiwala nandun sa tapos at sapat ng ginawa ni Kristo kanyang death burial resurrection ang kanyang blood na na shed kompleto total package po ito at lahat ng ito ay ma-enjoy mo ora mismo, including yung eternal security and that will save you and that will save you forever. At sa mga mananampalataya na, I hope it adds to your joy. I hope it adds to your appreciation. I hope it adds to your longing to serve God more, to love Him more, and to praise Him more sa ating buhay. And hallelujah, what a Savior that we have. Thank you for listening and glory, glory. Glory to His name. Our Heavenly Father, bless us now. Bless those truth. Sana itong mga katotohanan na ito ay patuloy naming mag, mag-inspire sa amin to do more for you, to serve you more, and mag-inspire sa amin, Lord, na mag excited Lord, sa buhay po na ito and as we wait for your coming at the rapture. Bless us now, Lord. Bless lahat ng endeavor ng mga kapatiran ngayon. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone and glory to God. Have a good day, everyone.
Thank you, Mr. Host, and thank you, everyone. Bethlehem Calvary all of it tells Oh what a Savior is mine Mountains and plains with His praises shall swell Oh what a Savior say 